more people's uh, life trajectory, and by that I mean how well they learn their way into life, is damaged by the process of learning to read than by any other single thing that we impose on people. So I want to take us back a couple of steps into the conference so far. Before we go into the pure learning conversation, revisit a couple of things about the reading conversation to kind of set it up. We talked about, you know, the, in terms of the reading conversation, there's so many things that make reading difficult. Um, it's, uh, like Louise and Moses says, it's like rocket science. It really is. I mean, in the sense that, you know, getting a child, a newborn child, all the way through the kind of various um, stages that are necessary to make this experience of this uh, technical artifact, this code, transparent so that their mind is able to read and write with the same ease and transparency as they can speak and listen to make it that invisible, that fluid, that automatic, that unconscious. Right? It, it's like launching a space shuttle. Right? All these particular things have to happen just the right way. And kids that are off trajectory in any one of those ways have problems. But the reason that it's so difficult, the reason that we have to study all the things Reed Line was talking about yesterday Right? is because of the confusion that's involved. I mean, back in Plato's day, as I mentioned yesterday, this, didn't, this wasn't a problem. If you knew the letters, how many, you ever see kids that really have problems with the letter names? I mean, some do. But if you were to look at the percentage of the 84% of African American fourth grade children, for example, who are below proficiency in reading for their entire educational, right? and all of the tr trouble that they're having, it's not because they can't say A, B, C. Right? It's not because they don't know the words. This is a chair. This is a whatever we'll call this. That's a bottle of water, right? Dog and cat. Now, they don't have a problem with naming. They don't have problems with letters. Letters are names for things. What they have a problem with is compressing them together and then being this confusing, formulatic way to represent sounds. There's a confusion all mangled up in that. And their brain just doesn't have the time to work through that confusion before the whole thing breaks down and it gets amplified in the ways we talked about yesterday into them saying, God, there must be something wrong with my brain because I can't do this. <coughs> but at the heart of it is this confusion. I mean, here the kid grew up in his whole life. He never saw an object change its name when it changed its position. And yet, this is B. Is it B now? No. Is it B now? Yes. Is it B now? No. Is it B now? No. Is it B now? Yes. We're talking about children experiencing a form of confusion that's unnatural to the world. I, I think that's a that's an interesting and good way to frame things. Well, yeah. Uh, English writing is a mess. The alphabet that we use to write English now was not created for English. It was created for Latin. The English language has about 40 different phonemes that are significant, by which we mean sound values that your ear picks up in order to make the distinctions that make meaning. Our alphabet only has 26 symbols, and so therefore we're always compromised in certain areas by having to represent sounds with symbols that weren't designed to suit those sounds. And that requires doubling up letters and having other letters serving as markers to tell you what sound a particular letter is supposed to have. So we get GHs and THs and PHs that are supposed to sound like Fs. These things are, you know, there to represent these sounds that don't have their own letters. There are all these complexities. It's a real puzzle, and um, it's a very arbitrary exercise in orthography to figure out what's what. C, K, sh, sh, O, uh, ow, ah, wa, u, M, mm, P, P, A, 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 R, 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 I, A, E, S, 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 Z, Oh, uh, ow, ah, wah, oo, and, mm. It's my brain hurts. 
I can't understand what it's saying. The brain is stirred, my head is still hurting. It's like it kept on do do do. Just beat. I didn't even know that word. I don't even know what's going on in my head. Very difficult, like putting sounds to these symbols. Mm. Uh, knowing the difference between one and another, knowing that some are numbers and some are letters, and they can put them together and they form a completely different thing. I knew the letter names. It was like the sounds and the bigger words, and the words that like when you sign them out, they don't, they aren't pronounced the way they sound. I get confused a lot because I'll sit there and I get frustrated. It's um. It's no fun. I don't like reading. I mean, I'm sounding them out like I've been taught, but it just ain't, I don't know, it just don't work. Because, you know, they tell you to sound it out, and then, you know, you get vowels, and some of them are sounding it, and it's just like, well, these two work together to make this, and it's like, huh? <laughs> and it's just like, it's so confusing. Hey, well, in English, <laughs> it's all hot. There are lots of reasons why English is stinky. Inconsistencies, absurdities, Facts contrary to the uh, etymology that show up in the writing system, uh, it's a mess. English seems to be a total monster. Why do I have one tooth and several teeth and I go into a restaurant and sit in one booth and there aren't several beef? Think about the E-N-O-U-G-A spells enough. The letter O makes every sound under the sun in different words in English. Like, uh, other, hmm, you know, uh, off, of. Off by F, I don't see hear F making the word sounds very often, and it doesn't, in fact. It only does it in of. <laughs> to spell vo, T-H-O-U-G-H, is madness. It would have been much more sensible just to use an R. But what we use, I-R, E-R, U-R, A-R, and O-R, to represent. How come the and k are two different Letters, but ba and ba are not. I mean, what are the rules here? Where are you going to divide this up? Uh, I don't know of anything that is has more exceptions than um, reading uh, than reading in English. And I think that's a shame. I think it, it was a design error, basically. I mean, I see no reason for it to be that way. Now we learn. We learn as children. And we're, you know, sort of brought into a cultural environment where we become habituated to those relationships. But there's nothing natural about it, nothing at all. So, <clears throat> artificial confusion, yeah? <laughs> I mean, the kind of confusion involved in learning to read is unlike any form of confusion our organism ever experienced before in nature. Right? The confusion is associated with a, an artifact. It's not the confusion associated in, in a conversation that's happening live between people. It's not the kind of confusion that you have in any natural organic setting. It's the confusion of operating a technology at this mind-bending, mind-altering speed. Remember the conversation yesterday, we were talking about the brain having to generate this internal language simulation faster than language, faster than the speed of language. Certainly approximating it, the temp remember the temporal profile? Yeah. So we're talking about the lives of our children being either radically enabled or disabled and harmed by whether or not their birth through the beginnings and you know this challenge window of learning to read, whether or not their life learning trajectory has prepared them and the instruction has prepared them to take this code with all of its confusions that we just saw and in approximately one-tenth of a second per letter sound correspondence work out all that confusion so that their minds can recognize this word. And if they can't by the time within, as you heard yesterday, you know, roughly a year, 360 days, of uh, <clears throat> experiencing this confusion, 
trying to work through it. If they can't break through to transparency, right, then their lives are trashed. And we kind of just all take this for granted. This is one example of our gross negligence and ignorance about learning. 